what does the Discovery Channel, the Moon, and loan companies all have in common? If you guessed sharks, oh, you are on the right path for this video. Today, we are figuring out exactly how Russian sharks came to be on the moon in this to be original shark side of the moon. I don't know if this movie was trying to be satire or it's just a, a crappy movie, but oh boy, is it a doozy. There are so many good, bad, potentially awful movies on Tubi. I've seen this movie about five times now, and uh, I can tell you it, it doesn't really get any better. So let's just hop into it. The start of the movie brings us to a top secret Soviet lab somewhere near Moscow. We get introduced to two Russian scientists when one of the scientists comes up to the other and knocks a bucket out of the dude's hand. Of course, the electric fence goes down with the bucket and out pops these creatures, which are intelligent Russian bipedal sharks. These things are horrendous. So they start running through the entire lab, killing anybody that they can find. They eventually make it outside and just start murdering everybody there too, of course. Also, there's a lady in here who takes off her shoe to try to fight the sharks and she does literally nothing. She puts up an extremely courageous effort, but just dies. The two Russian scientists escape as they meet near a fence, but they explain that the sharks cannot make it to the ocean or else they'll just wreak havoc on everything. So instead they bring them to a space shuttle. Sergei starts to mess with the controls to try to get it up and running so they can take off, but they find out that they don't really have enough time. The sharks are just coming like way too quick. So they like either need to speed it up or cause a distraction. So of course the other scientist distracts them by kind of sacrificing himself. He goes outside of the cabin, shoots a flare for the motherland. That was a terrible Russian accent. I don't know what that was. For the motherland. For the motherland. It's for the motherland. Anyway, he shoots a flare that distracts them for maybe 10 seconds, and then he just decides to sit back down and smoke a cigarette. Like to me, he had plenty of time to just like shoot the flare and then head back to the cabin to save himself, or just like poke his head out of the cabin, shoot the flare for the motherland, and then just go back and lock the cabin. But I, I just, I don't understand his mentality with it. It's like he wanted to go out a hero, but he didn't really need to at that point. Unless he really just wanted a cigarette. At that point, it's kind of worth dying for, I guess. Sergei eventually gets the rocket going and lifts off. And we're assuming he goes to the moon because that's what the name of this movie is called. We then fast forward an unknown amount of time to Americans who are having problems of their own. Green across the board, Commander, and, and, oh, oh wow. I think I shouldn't have had those tacos. I oh, told you not to trust that food truck. I'm just gonna touch you here. Ah, ah, ah. You got a possible appendicitis. No, no, no. Captain. This is, oh. She's not clear to fly. Luckily for her, it wasn't the bad tacos and her appendix is just exploding. Mission Control, Engineer Gilmore has fallen ill and needs medical attention. We need to delay the launch. Mission Control tells them that they cannot delay the launch because if they do, they won't be able to go until another six months. So instead, they have to bring in an alternate. We will alert the alternate. He's standing by. Shit. The alternate shows up and we get some extremely silly banter back and forth between him and the commander. Howdy, boss. Prepped and ready to go to the moon. I hear the commute is killer. Michael, for the last time, I'm not your boss. I'm your commander. Roger that, commander. The commander tells the alternate, whose name is Michael, that he needs to take his job seriously because this mission is way too important for humanity. Please take this seriously. This mission is far too important to humanity. But then he assures her by saying that she doesn't need to worry about him because he's there to work. You don't have to worry about me, Commander. I'm here to work. Everything is a go. They're all set to fly to the moon when something else unexpected happens. Oh, shoot. What is it, Michael? I think I left my stove on. to tabula rasa that is a successful launch i repeat a successful launch <laughs> 
Nice work, everyone. Now the real work begins. All right. I mean, the gotta make a popcorn if anybody needs something. What? <laughs> cool. I just love this little scene so much for some reason. I'm still trying to figure out Michael's reaction to the guy making popcorn. I can't tell if it's scripted or if he genuinely thought that it was funny when it was said. The way that he turns and just giggles is hilarious. I mean, the guy can make a popcorn if anybody needs something. <laughs> what? Come on. After a successful launch, they get to the moon. As they're approaching, they hit some electromagnetic radiation that starts throwing them off course. So it also fries their entire electrical system on the ship. So the commander decides to take a drastic measure and restart the ship's power. In doing so, they'll be thrown off course even more, making it more likely for them to land on the other side of the moon, the far side. She explains that that's a risk that they have to take. Unfortunately though, they hit another field of electromagnetic magnetic radiation, which blows them off course even more. It knocks out a satellite. That's their only communication to mission control. And they are severely going down now on the other far side of the moon. systems we need to figure out a way to get back to earth now they crash land on the far side of the moon but everybody seems to be okay the commander decides to take a few people out to go and scavenge a rover so they can get additional parts for their ship and anything else that they might need this is when we get to see cgi cinema perfection mwah, 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 mwah. They're making more of a connection with that lunar surface than I can with other people. I know I said this was CGI perfection, but I honestly can't tell if they filmed it on the moon or not. Oh, of course they didn't film it on the moon because nobody's ever been to the moon. Aren't you glad I came, Commander? Okay, let's take what we need and head back. I just found out that the Earth is flat. What is it, Liam? Bloody nose. I hit my face pretty bad during the crash. Captain, I think you should see this. Back to the ship! Where are those? Sharks? Sharks on the motherfucking moon. But who saved them? Who set the trap? How are they breathing? I think they just spoke Russian. Okay, first there are giant sharks, now there are Russians? You think they're friendly? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Welcome to Zemo. Turns out they were saved by two badass Russians. We find out the Russian is Sergei. He's been living on the moon for 40 years. And the girl is Hikola? Hikola? Ecola? E. coli? Again, this is a cool E. coli. She's Sergei's adopted daughter who has some sort of deformity on her back, which Michael just points out and kind of offends everybody. What is up with her back? Michael, stop. They just saved us. If you ever will try to touch my daughter again, I will make the arrangement to send you back home in a plastic bag. You understood? I'm, I'm sorry. They all decide to go to Sergei's ship to gather supplies and get the sharks off of their trail. And then they're all gonna head back to the main ship and try to take off from there. Sounds like a primo plan to me. Before heading off, another crewmate named Henry is just kind of standing there awkwardly at the rover and gets kidnapped by one of the sharks. 
They say screw him in the meantime, there's nothing that they can do, they'll find him later. It cuts to Henry somewhere underground in a settlement where he overhears the Russian sharks talking about their plan. Apparently, surprise, surprise, they're the ones that brought down the ship with the electromagnetic radiation. We are then introduced to this beauty, the leader of the hybrid sharks, Zarina. I'm Zarina Sella. I'm sure you have questions. So do I. But then we are thrusted into Sergei's ship where we start finding out some real answers. Sergei explains to them how the sharks got onto the moon in the first place, which we saw from the beginning. He says that they were able to survive for the last 40 years because they found resources underneath the Earth's surface and because Sergei is a botanist and has some awesome algae that produces oxygen. They also upgraded some of the astronaut suits so Sergei can survive on the surface. They put some of that algae oxygen into a tank on his back and protects him from the frigid moon temperatures. Meanwhile, we find out a little bit more about who or what E. Cola actually is. Why doesn't she need a suit? Or oxygen? I knew there was something fishy about her. He was right. I'm one of them. Created to survive in all conditions. The commander's had enough of it and wants to go save Henry, so they figure out where he's being held. Unfortunately, Henry is being tortured by the sharks, and Zarina's beauty does nothing to help his case. Uh, I swear, I don't know where the ship is. The crash took us so far off course, and I, I, I... I just want your ship. You and your crew can have everything we leave behind. Build your little colony in peace. We are going home. Home? Yes. The mother planet to us both, Earth. He ends up getting his leg bitten off in an extremely terrifying way. Scar. Promise me you won't hurt my crew. On my honor as Zarina, ruler of the hybrid sharks. Prepare the guards. We're taking the ship. Henry gives up the ship's location on the map, and Zarina gathers up a bunch of hybrid sharks to go and take it. The crew is heading off to the hybrid shark settlement. Sergei says that they're able to have babies through asexual reproduction, so they don't actually need a mate. You know, this natural uh, automatic pathogenesis and asexual reproduction started to happen. Nature finds a way. And Akula says that all of the eggs are being held in some storage facility. All the eggs are cryogenically frozen in the hopes that they one day will have enough resources to hatch them all. The ones that are allowed to be born, the best and the strongest, are trained to protect the crater. No wonder you weren't chosen. Really, the important part to remember is that asexual reproduction and the babies. If I ever have to take out a half shark, half human hybrid, I'm doing a 12 foot moon jump over that motherfucker and I'm stabbing it right in the back. There simply is no other way to dispatch one of these creatures. Actually, maybe I'd be like, let's embrace, let's embrace. Give me a hug. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't like this. Something feels wrong. What's that? What? It looks like a piece of fabric, maybe from one of the spacesuits. Meanwhile, two of the crew members that were on the ship decide to go out and search for the commander and her crew. In doing so, they run into a bit of trouble of their own. There's nothing living on the moon! Owen, you cut out for a second. Owen? Owen! Owen! Owen? Owen?
After the little screaming session, we see one of the best scenes of the entire movie. I just love the shark's movement, how it's like bunched up and it like almost T poses at one point and they just like loop the same animation three different times. Oh my God. I'm sorry, I, I tried my best, but I just, <laughs> the ship. It's not safe. They find Henry underground who tells them that Zarina is planning to take all of the baby shark eggs, put them on the ship and then head back to Earth. They're all leaving when they come across the hybrid shark little baby area and actually have kind of a little ethical dilemma. Uh, guys, there are so many. Earth would never stand a chance. We should destroy them now. No. Those are innocent children. They haven't done anything wrong. Children? Those are monsters, killing machines. From what I heard about humans, they're not better. Should we kill all the humans too? The babies start sounding an alarm, which just sounds like they're repeatedly shitting themselves. <laughs> We've lingered here too long. You have to get out of here now. Let's go, hurry. Akula urges everybody to just get the hell out of there as she sticks around. Zarina eventually meets up with her, and this is when we find out that they are sisters. Apparently, they gave up Akula when she was a baby because she was different than all of them. Akula kind of holds a grudge against them for this. Zarina says that she should forgive them instead and help them get all of the little baby sharks onto the ship and head to Earth. We could finally go home. After Akula has uh, cooled off a little bit, she meets up with the rest of the crew. They all head back to the ship on a rover when a giant four-legged whale shark comes out of the moon's crust and starts chasing them. They temporarily fight off the whale shark. Remember that temporarily and make it back to the ship. It turns out there was a lot of sharks that attacked the ship while they were gone. Fortunately, a couple of the crew members were able to fend them off in the meantime, but says that there are a bunch more that are still coming. During the first wave, apparently there was a hull breach. So our buddy, one-legged Henry, decides to go and repair it himself. I got this. Henry, no! That's too dangerous! You have plenty of capable people here that can repair the ship. Josie and Tom figured out a way home. Akula and Sergey have been stuck here for 40 years, and all I did was give up the location. Now I'm gonna fix it. What is he doing? Saving your asses. I'll draw them away from the ship, and then I'll take care of them. Hopefully I'll be able to give them the slip, and then together we can get home. That's fucking right. He rode an oxygen tank and exploded. Oh shit. The two other crew members that really didn't have any plot armor, they also die as the main crew is taken prisoner by Zarina and her henchmen. Zarina takes control of the ship. They're about to be tortured more. Everything seems lost until someone saves them.
got you. How? I don't know. Unlike shitty Humpty Dumpty, Henry was able to put himself together again just to get eaten and lose his arm. Times USB. Before Henry died a second time, he was able to secure these flight coordinates on a USB. The commander says that they should get back to Sergei's ship to upload them so they can get back to Earth. They all start to jump out of the ship. Akula Stop. meets with Zarina again. Change your plans. And Akula just backspears the shit out of her. I don't know how gravity on the moon works, but all of the humans jumped out okay, but Zarina just landed like a pancake. A good thing she's dead though. My ship is not far away. Run! At this point, they start to realize that there are way too many hybrid sharks around for them to actually get the shuttle up and running. They need some sort of distraction and Sergei is up for the task. Unfortunately, his only plan is to commit suicide by flying the shuttle into their settlement, creating a massive magma explosion. I don't know how this really solves them getting off of the moon back onto Earth if both of the ships are gone, but I guess that really only leaves one way off of the moon. If you guessed that they were thrown into the mouth of a whale shark, which was hit by magma, turned to stone, torpedoed through space, entered Earth's atmosphere, landed in the ocean to which it dissolved and released these humans that survived, then I have to really give you props. What on Earth? Exactly. <laughs> Earth. <laughs> If you thought they were done, they are not. Oh, it hurts. Oh, it really hurts. Oh, where does it hurt? Come in, wave. Oh, well, I just breathe. Deep breaths. <laughs> Akula, I think you're pregnant. Akula, push. <laughs> Now we have another mouth to feed. Ah, the son of a bitch! These teeth are sharp! Nicole, I've got to take care of my babies! Akula! 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 Frightening? Yes. Uncomfortable? Yes. Makes sense? Absolutely not. Okay, it does kind of make sense because they briefly touched on it with the whole asexual reproduction. But Jesus Christ, that was a lot of sharks. There was, like, you couldn't even tell that she was pregnant. You're so fuck. Well, I hope you enjoyed that lovely movie. I'm still trying to wrap my head around how I feel about it. I obviously think it's a pretty shitty movie, but it's it's kind of fun too. I love the leaps that they take in this movie and the horrible jokes, the bad acting. It's all just a real 
treat. I hope you enjoyed my breakdown of this masterpiece. If you want me to break down a movie that you're interested in or that's cringy, uh, you can write it down in the comments below. Please like this video and subscribe. If you don't, you are totally fucked.